Welcome to the Words to Empower television broadcast, featuring Frank and Jackie Stewart, pastor and first lady of the Axe Ministries. And now, Frank and Jackie Stewart. Welcome to the Words to Empower broadcast with Pastor Frank and Lady Jacqueline. We're so glad that you're joining us today. I will be your host on today. And this week, we just want to rewind, recap, and recall this Easter season, this resurrection season that we just experienced on last week and the weeks prior to that. We went from Palm Sunday to Resurrection Sunday, and now just to reflect back so that we don't forget the things that God has spoken unto us, the things that He's imparted and in place in our spirits, in our souls, in our hearts, and in our minds. We just want to reflect and bask in the glory of God and the glorious resurrection that He has um, afforded and He has done and He has provided for for each and every one of us. And so we're thanking you for joining us on today, today, today. We're going to revisit and we're going to recap and rewind. Let's just, let's just kind of back up and see what did God say to us um, going into this resurrection season, because it is time for a resurrection and it's time for a miracle. God wants to do wonders, signs and miracles but we must be in place to receive them and be in expectation. When we're in anticipation and in expectation, God can do the miraculous. That's faith, brothers and sisters. We walk by faith and not by sight. And so we're thanking God for this opportunity just to reflect on the resurrection. So join us in the scripture passage that we're going to go to today from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 22. We're going to be reading verses one through and including maybe verse 28. We'll, we'll kind of sporadically go through this passage of scripture. So turn and study with us on today. Um, if you have electronic devices, go ahead and scroll. Go ahead and, and touch and, and flip and just turn over um, to this passage of scripture with us. All right. So we're going to be coming from St. Luke chapter 22 verses one through and including verse number 34. So we're going to kind of pull out some um, specific passages in this um, passage of scripture, just a few verses so that we can kind of rewind, recap and recall as we reflect on this powerful resurrection season. Now it says, now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill Jesus, for they feared the people. And then entered Satan into Judas Iscariot, being one of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray Jesus unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. He promised and sought opportunity to portray him unto them in the absence of the multitudes. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent, this is Jesus, sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where wilt thou that we should prepare? And Jesus said unto them, behold, when ye are entered into the city of Jerusalem, there ye shall find a man to meet you bearing a water picture, follow him into the house where he is and entereth in. And ye shall say unto the goodman of the house, the master saith unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished and there make ready. And they went and found it just as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them with desire, with earnest, eager desire, I have desired to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined. But woe unto him, woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And he began to inquire among themselves. They all began to inquire which of them it was that should do this thing to betray Jesus. And there was also a strife amongst them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. Wow. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger and he that is chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth is not he that sitteth at meat. But I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint you a kingdom. I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on my thrones, sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto them, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And so we we walked through this passage of scripture during Passion Week before Jesus fulfilled his destiny on the cross. We know that Jesus came into the world to give his life a ransom for many, to give his life up for the sins of the world, to take upon himself the sins of the world so that we didn't have to be crucified. We didn't have to be placed on that cross. And Jesus encounters so many things on the way to the cross while he is hanging on the cross. And even after the resurrection, after he comes down from the cross and is raised from the dead. So today we want to focus and we want to rewind, recap and reflect on this past, this part of Passion Week where Jesus is having the Last Supper with his disciples. And this is where they're celebrating the Feast of Passover. There are hundreds and hundreds of people, thousands of people who have come into Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover from all over the world. And it is a hustle and a bustling time right in Jerusalem right now. And when Jesus gets ready to come into the city, they are waiting for him. They are looking for him. They are expecting him because they've heard so much about him, the miracles, the signs and the wonders that he's performed. And they're looking for Jesus because they want to see Jesus because they know that Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead and say they, they want to see Jesus. They want to know, you know, what's up. They want to know what's going on. They want to know. We've been hearing about this in our own countries, in our own cities, in our own towns. We now want to see Jesus now that we've come Come all the way to Jerusalem to worship here at the Passover. And so it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Passover that they're celebrating right here at this time. And the Bible says that Satan has already entered into Judas Iscariot to betray Jesus. And he goes to the chief priests and to the elders and to the scribes and says, you know, I will turn him over to you, but what are you going to give me? You know, I'm a bargain with you. And he does. And he bargains for 30 pieces of silver. And so as he bargains for these 30 pieces of silver, he gets in the in the place where now he has to decide how he's going to betray Jesus and when he's going to do it along with those chief priests and elders. And he's the Bible says he sought opportunity 
to betray Jesus. Now, Jesus, we've been talking about on even on the Facebook live on Acts Ministries, WTE Facebook page. We've been talking about being focused um, for this 2021 year, being so focused that you're not distracted from what God has called you to do, what God is calling you to do, where he's calling you to be and what God is doing in your life. And so we're trying to re you know, maintain that focus, maintain that momentum, maintain that word that God spoke to us at the beginning of the year coming out of 2020 with 2020 vision. He's still telling us to stay focused, stay focused, stay focused. And so we're looking at Jesus staying focused, even in the midst of betrayal. He knows that Judas Iscariot is going to betray him. He knew it when he picked him. And that's so much focus that Jesus shows us that even when he picked Judas Iscariot three and a half years earlier, he knew that at the end of his journey to the, you know, going to the cross that Judas was going to betray him. And Jesus still calls him friend. Jesus still feeds him with the 5,000, the 4,000 and every missionary journey trip they went on, every city and town they in, um, entered into. He even allowed. Now, listen, Jesus is omniscient. He already knows what we're going to do before we do it, even though he was all man and all God. The God part of him didn't cease to be. He still knew what we were thinking. And oftentimes in the New Testament, the scribes and the Pharisees would be thinking things and Jesus would answer them according to what they were thinking. He knew exactly what was on their mind and he knows exactly what's on your mind as well. And so Jesus is wanting us to know you can stay focused if you put in the effort, if you put in the dedication, if you put in the discipline, you can remain focused even through civil unrest, even through COVID-19, even through social economic unrest. You can, you can remain focused even through social injustice. You can remain focused even through hardships and economy and, you know, crisis and all of the things that are happening, deaths on every hand and funerals and, and bereaving and grieving. You can still remain focused. And we're going to dive into this scripture and, and pull out more and, and, and rehearse. And that's what meditation is. The Bible wants us to be able to not only study the word of God, but to meditate on the word of God day and night. And meditate is a, is a muttering and an uttering from the mouth. It, it goes back to the analogy of the cow who chews the cud. He swallows it and it goes down into the first part of his stomach, but then he regurgitates it back up, chews on it some more and swallows some more. He's getting all the nutrients. He's getting all the vitamins out. So so we want you to stay tuned. We're going to break right now and we'll be right back after these messages. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Acts Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the community, communities that we're in. So we're asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts Ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you. I need you. You need me. We, we need, need one, one another. another. And, and oh, how we need God. God. 
During these uncertain times, there's one thing that all of us can do to protect one another, and that is to wear a mask. Whatever you do, wherever you go, whenever you're around anyone, please wear a mask. I am Pastor Frank Stewart. And I'm Lady Jacqueline Stewart. Welcome back to the Words to Empower broadcast. We are rehearsing, reflecting, rewinding, and recapping as we reflect on this resurrection season. It is time for a resurrection, and it did not end with Easter. And so Jesus is walking us through, and he's re helping us to remember and to rehearse and to reflect what we have just experienced the last couple of weeks when we went through Palm Sunday, and we went through Easter Sunday on last week, and we're wanting you to walk with us as we reflect on what God spoke to us, because Resurrection Sunday should not just be one day of the year. Resurrection Sunday is, is a time where we really should focus on it, but we should be experiencing a resurrection every day of our lives, because God is doing the miraculous for us. We called the month of March, Miraculous March. And we thank you for supporting the ministry, um, not just in Miraculous March, but we thank you for being there for Acts Ministries, being there for WTE Broadcast. We thank you for supporting us. We love you. We appreciate you. And we wish you Godspeed. And we know that you will continue as you have done in the past to be a blessing to the ministry. And we just want to tell you, thank you. Now, as we dive right back into our lesson on today, we are in the gospel of St. Luke chapter 22. And we have rehearsed some of these passages of scripture where Judas Iscariot has um, already had Satan to enter into him. And now he's seeking He's seeking opportunities to betray Jesus. He's looking for opportunities to turn Jesus over to the Romans, to turn him over to the religious leaders so that they can imprison him, bind him, and even execute him by, by crucifixion. Crucifixion was the most cruel type of punishment and execution in the Roman world at the time that Jesus is, is walking the earth. And they did it merciless mercilessly. They did it with no mercy. They did it without batting an eye. They did it to inflict pain. They did it to make you suffer, not just to die, but to suffer in the death. And so Jesus is going to suffer for each and every one of us on the cross. But on his way to the cross, he encounters so many things that he has to maintain his focus so that he doesn't get distracted from his destiny, what God has ordained and commissioned for him to do. He knew that he was born into this world to die for the sins of the world. So when you understand that Jesus was born to die, you understand that when he tells us and he says the scripture, he says in his word that he says, no man taketh my life. I have the power to lay it down. And I have the power to pick it back up again. So when we understand that Jesus is giving his life as a ransom for many, Jesus is offering himself up as our sacrifice willingly. And he's not only willing, he's able and he's qualified to be the sacrificial lamb of God to offer himself up as the sins of the world. But we encounter the things that that, that he's he's experiencing on his way to the cross. And one of them was betrayal from not just Judas Iscariot, but he's betrayed into the hands of men. And he's 
in the process of going through the most critical part of his ministry, which is to die on the cross. And he needs his disciples around him. They've been with him for three and a half years. They've eaten with him. They've slept with him. They've gone on every missionary journey from town to town and from city to city. And now they, they've experienced, you know, every miracle. They've seen it with their own eyes. They were not, they were not told about what Jesus had done. They saw what Jesus did. They experienced it. And then Jesus had them participate in miracles. When he fed the 5,000, he told them to sit down in companies on the grass in the wilderness. And then he told his disciples, now you give out to them. After he broke that bread and blessed it and, and gave it to them, that fish and that bread, he gave it to his disciples so that they can participate in the miracle. God wants us to be able to participate in the miracles and to see what he's done and to be able to be grateful and thankful for what he's done. So we see the betrayal even of Judas Iscariot that has participated in every miracle, has reaped the benefit of being with Jesus has reaped the benefits and the blessings of just being a part of Jesus um, calling his disciples. And so Jesus knew that Judas was a thief when he called him. But it's, it's interesting to note that Jesus didn't call Matthew, the tax collector, to be the one to keep the treasury, to keep the bag for the group, to be the treasurer of the 12 disciples. He let Judas be that, even though he knew Judas was tipping off the top. He knew that Judas was dipping in the bag. He knew that Judas was a thief and that he was taking stuff for himself. Jesus already knew that. Jesus didn't call him on the carpet for it either. Jesus gave him opportunity. If you can't change after being with Jesus, Jesus, if you can't walk, talk, breathe, live, sleep, eat, go on trips, go on from town to town, city, if you don't change after being with Jesus, that's a testimony in itself. And that's and it's a powerful witness against Judas because Judas could have changed being in the presence of Jesus. And so it teaches us even being in the church, being in, in the ministry, being um, called of God, being wherever we are. God is saying, I still need you to change. I still you need you to understand that you cannot remain the same person that you were 20 years ago, that you were 10 years ago, that you were 15 years ago. We must be transformed into the image of his dear son. He wants us to be going from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And he doesn't want us to become stale or stagnant. He wants us to move with the spirit because he says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And so we see Jesus in this passion week. He's betrayed by Judas. And then his disciples get into arguments amongst themselves of who's going to be the greatest. I'm, I'm bigger than you. I'm better than you. I was called before you. I've been here longer than you. Jesus, he put me in the inner circle, blah, blah, blah. We could go on and on and on about how they argued amongst one another who would be the greatest. Jesus, at one point, at another time, he had to bring a child in the midst of them to say, except you become as this little child, you cannot even enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due season. He wants us to humble ourselves. He doesn't want to humble us. And you don't want God to humble you because when God humbles you, it's very, very different than you taking it on to yourself and you humbling yourself before the mighty hand of God. God wants us to do it. He doesn't want to have to do it. That's why he told us to humble ourselves. He says, if you humble yourself, you will be exalted. But he says, if you exalt yourself, you will be abased. So the, the lesson we learn is to get low, stay low, prefer our brother and our sister. When it comes to um, putting somebody out there front, it's not me, my, and I. It's not me, my four, and no more. No, it's everyone else. We learn how to put God first, family next. Um, we need to learn how to put our brother and sister next. And we come at the end of the line somewhere and we say that don't seem fair. But the, the Bible teaches us he that is first shall be last and he that is last shall be first. So when we understand God's way of doing things, we will humble ourselves. We will um, uh, abase ourselves. We will prefer our brothers. We will deny ourselves, take up our crosses and we will follow him. And so I know that sounds like a tall order, but it's possible. It's possible because God has given us the power of the Holy Ghost. And that came after, after the resurrection that came 
um, on Pentecost and we'll travel into Pentecost coming up soon. But we want you to um, walk with us some more as we go through and reflect on what Jesus um, had for us to learn in the passages of scripture dealing with the Passion Week as he was dealing with his disciples. So they're arguing amongst one, one another. They're having turf wars, turf wars. In, at the very time that Jesus is getting ready to sacrifice himself, Jesus is agonizing. Jesus goes into the Garden of Gethsemane and he begins to pray and he prays so earnestly. The Bible says that his sweat become as became as great drops of blood. Now that's some praying. That's some intensity. That's some earnest fervent, red hot prayers where Jesus is not only praying, but he's praying to the point that he goes into hemotidrosis. That's where the blood comes out of the pores instead of just water and salt coming out of your pores. You have it actually blood from your body dripping. And the Bible says that it dripped from him to the ground. That's how much it didn't just run down his face. The blood dripped to the ground. So we want to glean and pull out these nuggets and all of these lessons that God has for us, has for us during this Passover journey and during this Pentecost journey and during this resurrection season journey, we're walking with Jesus so that he can walk with us because the Bible says Enoch walked with God until he was not for God took him and we want God to take us to another level, take us to another dimension in him, take us to the place that he's trying to um, take us and take us to our destiny in Christ. We are out of time. Wow. The time went so fast, but we just want you to remember um, in the midst of betrayal, in the midst of turf wars, and even in the midst of denial, Jesus remained focused and brothers and sisters, you and I must remain focused. So until next week, we want to pray. Um, we're asking you to send your prayer requests in to wtebroadcast at gmail.com. We'd love to connect and pray with you. And if you want to connect with the ministry, you can do so via our website at axministriesonline.org. Let's pray right now before we leave on the broadcast today. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to rehearse, reflect, and rewind and recap your word. Father, we just don't want Easter to be one day of the year. We just don't want Resurrection Sunday to happen one day in the year. But Lord, we want a resurrection in our lives, in our hearts, in our souls, in our spirits, in our families, in our relationships. We want a resurrection in our nation, in our country. We want a resurrection, Lord God, in our finances, in our bodies. We need a resurrection, Father. So help us as we focus, Lord God, upon you to receive the miracle signs and wonders that you have for us. It's in the mighty and wonderful, majestic name of Jesus we pray. Let all God's people say amen and amen. Thank you for joining us today on the Words to Empower broadcast. We look to see you next week. Remember, always remember, if you're not having church, when you leave church, then you haven't had church. So let's focus on God's word so that we can have not only church, but have a resurrection also. God bless you. God keep you. God make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you his peace. Until next week. We love you. Bye-bye. The Axe Ministries is located at 1423 Ingram in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock. Call 501-329-2055 or go to axeministriesonline.org for more information.